Today's video is brought to you by Audible. Get your free audiobook download and 30 day free trial at www.audibletrial.com forward slash magstv or click the link in the video description down below. Ladies and gents, and welcome back to Cold Waters with Mags, and welcome to the 11th of November, 1968. Yes, today we're starting off the 1968 campaign after the USS Boston in the 1984 campaign was sadly lost during my very first live stream. Oops. So anyway, our new submarine for the 1968 campaign is the USS L. Mendel Rivers, SSN 686. This is a Sturgeon class nuclear powered attack submarine. So let's quickly talk about the Sturgeon. The Sturgeon first entered commission with the United States Navy in 1967, one year before the time frame of this particular campaign. So it is the newest submarine available to the US Navy. In terms of construction, the Sturgeon directly succeeded the Los Angeles class 688 submarine. And for a limited amount of time, these two boats actually served together until 1990 when the Sturgeon class was finally retired. Now, while this may be the newest, nastiest boat available to the US Navy, the 1968 campaign plays quite a bit different to the 1984 one. Unlike the 1984 campaign with the Los Angeles class, and in fact most of the high-end submarines that you can select are the biggest, nastiest things in the ocean, the Sturgeon is not, despite being the newest thing on the block. The first thing you need to understand about the Sturgeon is it has a maximum speed of only 25 knots in cold waters. This is not fast by any means, and while the submarine is fairly quiet for the time frame, not perfectly quiet and nowhere near as good as its 1984 counterparts, at 25 knots, almost everything in the water that isn't a submarine is significantly faster than it. And when it comes to submarines, while the majority of the Soviet submarines that you will be facing in the 1968 campaign are in fact as slow or slower than you, there are quite a number that are significantly faster. This is important because, well, in the 1984 campaign with submarines such as the Los Angeles class, you could intercept fleets that were moving at speed, while maintaining a certain level of stealth. In the 1968 campaign, however, you cannot. The standard cruising speed for most surface fleets when they do not realize that you are hunting them is about 16 knots, which means you are at over half your maximum speed simply trying to maintain speed with them. To catch them, you want to take yourself up to about 20 knots, and at that point, well, you're very close to cavitating unless you're running deep, and it is likely that their sonars will hear you. This means the positioning of your submarine is significantly more important in the 1968 campaign. The second is the weapon systems you have on offer. In the 1984 campaign, you have the absolutely deadly Mark 48 torpedo. You are also equipped with anti-ship missiles. In the 1968 campaign, the Sturgeon class carries no anti-ship missiles, and it is armed with two types of torpedo. The first is what I'm firing here. This is the Mark 16. Now, the Mark 16 torpedo is an improved version of the Mark 14 torpedo used by the US Navy in World War II. And the Mark 16 has a few interesting things going for it. For a start, it's nearly 600 kilogram TPX warhead is one of the most powerful conventional explosive warheads ever created for a torpedo. The second thing going for it is it was fast. The hydrogen peroxide propulsion system can push this torpedo along at around 46 knots. The downsides? No active guidance. This torpedo is not wire controlled. It has no sonar tracking on board. It can be fired only in a straight line to target. In real life, it could also be fired to follow a pattern in much the same way that you see some Soviet torpedoes perform a snake pattern or an S pattern. Sonar 
but unfortunately this option doesn't appear to be available in cold waters. So as you saw then, you usually need to fire these torpedoes in groups. One leading the target assuming it's going to maintain heading and speed, and another assuming that it will see the torpedo and change direction and heading. It's also worth noting that when fired, Mark 16 torpedoes will immediately travel to the surface. They cannot be used against submarines, unless you happen to get lucky and find one on the surface. Depending on the size and speed of the target, I can fire between two and four to take out a surface vessel with these torpedoes. This means a lot more trips back to Holy Lock to load up on the Mark 16s as you go through them. Now the second torpedo you have on board is, well, it has its own quirks. It's the Mark 37 torpedo. Now the Mark 37 torpedo has a lot more in common with the Mark 48s from the Call 1984 campaign. Ready. It has active and passive guidance, and it can be wire guided. It also has a very, very powerful warhead. There is just one small issue with this torpedo. It can only do 17 knots. Now this means that most of the ships that you would fire this at on the surface will actually be cruising at about the same speed that this torpedo is capable of moving. So your chances of hitting them are extremely unlikely. Likewise, this torpedo is so slow that virtually every submarine you're going to encounter can just straight up outrun it. In fact, you need to be very careful when you fire this torpedo and then accelerate to not run into your own torpedo after firing it. But it does have one upside. The propulsion system for this torpedo is fully electrical. This means that in the 1968 campaign time frame, it is very, very, very quiet. So providing you can position your submarine in a spot that allows you to fire the torpedo without being detected, it is actually highly unlikely that the target is going to hear this torpedo approaching until it's already over. Now in the 1968 campaign you do not have any MOS either. The MOS just does not exist in this time frame. However there is another usage for the Mark 37 and I'm actually going to demonstrate it here. I fired a Mark 37 at the incoming Cashin class destroyer. Now since I've already taken down a ship, the Cashin knows I'm here, so it's passing through, listening, trying to locate me, and is maintaining a speed of 35 knots, which is over twice the maximum speed of the Mark 37. The only way this Mark 37 was ever going to hit that Cashin is if that Cashin accidentally ran over it. But as you can see, I've also fired a Mark 16. Now the Mark 16 looks like it's pretty good to target, but then the Cashin starts turning. Now there's still a pretty good chance that the Mark 16 is going to hit here, but just to make sure, what we do is we turn on the active sonar on the Mark 37. Immediately this starts pinging the hull at close range, and you can see the Cashin starting to increase its turn. This pretty much guaranteed the torpedo was going to land home. Now while I'm pretty sure in this particular situation the Mark 16 would have hit anyway, it would have just hit very slightly closer to the stern of the Cashin. It shows you can use the Mark 37s as a way of spooking ships to get them to maneuver and turn by pinging active sonar off their hulls, but you can use the 37 to do that ping so you don't necessarily have to give away your own submarine's position. The 1968 campaign is significantly more difficult than the 1984, because you do not have all the strengths that the 1984 submarines give you. The Los Angeles class, if it finds itself in a bad situation, has the lethal Mark 48 torpedo. It has anti-ship missiles, it has the MOS to confuse its enemies and potentially distract them away from itself, and it in itself is an incredibly fast, incredibly maneuverable, and incredibly quiet weapons platform, capable of fighting and evading its way out of whatever troubles it runs into. In the 1968 campaign, you have none of those advantages. And the performance gap between your submarine and what the Soviets are using against you is much much closer together and so we come to our mission reports two ships sunk in the area and they were the only two in the region we have nine mark 16s and 10 mark 37s left on board and of course this was actually our target so our first mission objective within the 1968 campaign has been completed our first soviet tonnage has been sent to the bottom and of course the first battle for the control of norway has been won as the Komsomol that we sunk first was carrying part of an invasion force intended for the city of Andoya. So for us, the war is now on. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching. As always, please remember to check out my sponsor for the channel Audible. Links in the video description down below. Also in the video description down below, you will find a link to my Patreon if you would like to become one of my patrons and help support the channel directly. Anyways, ladies and gents, until next time, remember to click that like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and as always, 
take care.